My wife, 30 female, got an abortion after she found out that I, 30 male, cheated. I need advice urgently. My wife, 30 female, and I, 30 male, have been together for close to 7 years. She was the most important thing in my life. She is slash was 4 months pregnant with our first child. These first 3 months of pregnancy have been hell. She has been extremely sick and she has had horrible morning sickness, mood swings to a point where I had started questioning whether I married the right person. So about a month ago, we had a team building dinner at my office where there was plenty of alcohol. After the team building, one of my coworkers, 32 male, invited 5 of us to his place. I got very drunk and made the worst mistake of my life. I slept with one of my coworkers, Lucy, 28 female. I knew immediately that I had made a mistake and so in the morning, I told her that it was a mistake and that I loved my wife. Things have been quiet from that time. The relationship with my wife had gotten better. The fourth month of pregnancy had been great. She is back to the happy person she was before. Everything changed on Tuesday this week when my wife asked me whether it's true that I slept with Lucy. I admitted immediately and asked who told her. Apparently, Lucy got in touch with my wife and told her everything. I tried to ask for forgiveness, but my wife basically told me that she is not interested in anything I have to say. That she needs time and not to talk to her. Yesterday, she went to work as usual and I thought maybe she would forgive me. Today, when I woke up to go to work, she was not home. I got worried because she was not picking up my calls and so I took time off today. About an hour ago, her best friend brought her home and immediately left. I tried to ask her what's wrong and she just said that I should ask my wife, which I did. So, she basically told me that she is done with our marriage. I need to look for a place to live for the next year as we apply for divorce. I asked what about our child. She said that she will give me the address of the hospital she went to so that I can get it. I tried asking more questions but she told me that she is tired and in pain and to leave her alone that I should tell her when I plan on moving out. I feel so sick. How do I solve this, please? I know that I made a mistake by sleeping with my coworker, but I don't think I can live without my wife. Is there any way I can fix this? It hurts because I feel like she aborted the child to get back at me. She didn't want children, but I managed to convince her to get one. Am I the asshole for banning my sister-in-law from my house over tomato sauce? I, 28 female, have an older brother, 32 male. He is married to sister-in-law, 33 female. I get along with her well, except for this one point. If you don't keep an eye on her, she will get into the kitchen and add seasonings to whatever is cooking. She thinks she is fixing stuff, but not all foods need turmeric in it. This Saturday, I received 40 pounds of tomatoes. It took me the whole weekend to turn it into a sauce that I was planning to can. I can it plain, then add whatever seasonings and herbs in it, depending on the recipe. They came to take a bag of spare clothes for one of their kids, and in the five minutes it took me to get it, she managed to get into the kitchen, add salt, pepper, turmeric, olive oil, garlic powder, and Italian herbs to all five of the pots that were simmering on the stove. I was so angry that I knew I couldn't be calm talking with her, so I simply walked to my brother, told him to take the clothes and his wife, and that she is no longer welcome in my house. She had followed me, was shocked, started apologizing, but I just ignored her. I added that he should come by tomorrow to take the sauce his wife ruined because otherwise it would be thrown away and that I expected 40 pounds of replacement tomatoes. They left. He came back with the tomatoes, an apology letter from her, and an apology carrot cake, my favorite. But I told him that I stand by my decision. Now my parents got involved. Since I'm the one that usually hosts, and since she is not allowed in my house, I told them to make alternative plans for Memorial Day. My husband says that I am in the right, but my parents say that my reaction is way overblown. Am I the asshole? I'm leaving him for my ex, and I don't like that he's so upset about it. I, 22 female, was in a relationship with Mark, 23 male. I don't know if I believe in something like soulmates, but if they ever did exist, we were the closest thing to it. Even though someone can be right for you, it could still be the wrong time, and that's what it was. It was the wrong time, so I broke up with him through the most painful breakup of my life, and I told him that if it was really meant to be, then we would find each other again, and I would give us another chance if the time was right. Then, months later, I met Luca, 25 male. It wasn't really meant to be anything, and I told him that from the start. I told him that I just wanted a friends with benefit at most, but nothing more. I wasn't ready for anything more. He asked me why, and I was honest, and the conversation went a little bit like this. I have unfinished business with my ex, and I know when the time comes, I'll need to close that door, so it's not fair to anyone if I start a new chapter with you, knowing that the last one isn't finished yet. Why not finish it now? Because I'm not ready. When will you be ready? I don't know. Well, whatever. I'll wait for you. You would be waiting for a while. That's fine. It's worth it to me. I can't lie and say that I don't have feelings for him. I can't lie and say that there isn't something there. There is. I don't think of Mark when I'm with him. It's just us, and that's how I like it. 
So there's definitely something there, but it's a commitment I'm scared of. It had been five months with him and he stopped asking me to be his girlfriend around month three after I said that if he asked me again, I'd have to step away. We had fun, gone out, and done everything couples would do, but I didn't let him get too close. Anytime it got serious, I reminded him it wasn't exclusive and that in the end, there was no strings attached, at least not on my end. I told him many times and I told him to keep his options open for others. I told him he could get hurt if he put all his eggs in my basket and that I didn't want them anyways. I was open, I was honest. He said he wouldn't mind getting hurt by me and that in the end, he knows what he's doing. Looking back, maybe I should have just ended it there. Now Mark is back. We ran into each other at the gym and we talked so long that the triangle from my pre-workout stopped before I even touched away. It was like everything came back at once. The time, the energy, the love. He asked me to go to lunch and I was reluctant at first but eventually said yes. We talked so much our food got cold and the ice melted in our drinks. He told me about his life and all of the changes, all the differences. It felt like almost all of the obstacles that were once in our way were now gone. Then I told him about my life and I told him about Luca. Mark asked if I would still give him another chance, and I told him I would have to think about it. I told him I would need time. It destroyed Luca to hear about it, but I warned him. I told him this would happen. I told him he would get hurt. I was honest. How could I have been more transparent? He's 25. He makes his own decisions. So why do I feel guilty? I'm not his mom. It's not my fault, is it? I waited three weeks before officially breaking whatever Luca and I had off. I needed time to think and time to see that Mark was really ready. We're not in a relationship, but we're seeing each other. We're getting closer again. We're getting back to where we were and where we left off. Luca called me the devil and said that if there were ever anything good about him being with me, it was that he knows now to never make that mistake again. I can't say I'm not sad. I'll miss him. But I don't want to feel guilty anymore. I want to focus on my future and I want to focus on Mark. It'll be okay, but I'm sorry, Luca. I just had the worst first date of my life. I figure I'm just going to tell you what happened and then we're going to try and work our way back from there. My date invited myself along with two other women so that he could speed up the process of finding his perfect three-way. I met this guy on a dating app and I feel like by all reasonable measures, he was pretty much just your average guy. Literally nothing in his profile could have prepared me for what was to come. We agreed to meet at this Italian restaurant that's about 15 minutes away from my house. So I show up in my Uber and I'm probably like 10 minutes early because I'm usually, I just usually show up early to things. I don't know. When I get there, he's standing outside the restaurant and I recognize him from his profile. So at least he's not a catfish. You know, we say hi to each other and then he's just like, okay, let's go inside and grab our table. He made a reservation. So the table was ready right when we got there. So at least that was nice. They bring us to our table and they seat us at this four top, which honestly isn't that weird if you think about it. We're really only sitting there for like maybe two minutes before this girl walks up, who I think at the time is just the waitress. But no, no. And you already know what's coming. She kind of just looks at me funny and then introduces herself just casually. And I'm like, oh, hi, like I'm Megan. And as she's sitting down, the next girl walks up. So all the girls are just introducing each other and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? He's just sitting there like completely fucking fine. And then she goes, oh, so like, how do you know so-and-so? As in the guy, I'm just not going to say his name because honestly, you know what? I should fucking say his name, Matthew. It was Matthew. And I'm like, oh, I actually don't really. This is our first date. So naturally my next question is, oh, well, how do you know Matthew? He looks me dead in the eyes and goes, I thought this was our first date. I just thought that these other two girls were friends that he knew that were around. Maybe he invited. I don't know. People are weird. But no, he'd scheduled this date at the same time with all three of us to meet at this place. And why, you might ask. Well, you're probably not asking because I already told you he was trying to speed up his process of finding the perfect three-way. We all left. My boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend, so now I'm facing jail time. Story time. I recently found out my boyfriend of three years has been sleeping with my best friend, Amy. And I found it all out because my boyfriend, Steve, went up to the bathroom this one time and he got a text message from Settings. Which, whose settings are texting them? Do you know what I mean? I obviously thought that this was so suspicious and I knew Steve's password, so I went on his phone and what I found 
made me feel ill. They had been sending each other <coughs> pics for months. So when he came back from the bathroom, I decided that I wasn't gonna confront him about it then and there. I had bigger plans. Looking back, I don't know how I didn't see the signs. They were literally always super, super friendly with each other. One time, Steve even went to the cinema with Amy and all of her friends, which is bizarre. Why wasn't I invited? So I came to the conclusion that Amy was in fact an asshole, and I started plotting my revenge plan. I live in the countryside, I live near a river and there are lots of leeches in this river and this gave me the perfect idea. I played that I didn't know anything for two weeks. Do you know how hard that was? So whilst I knew for a fact that they were with each other, I was gathering all of these leeches. Let me tell you, that shit is not easy. In the end, I gathered about 50 of the little fuckers. So two days ago, I called Amy and asked her if she wanted to hang out. Because the weather's been really nice, I was like, well, why don't we go in your mum and dad's hot tub? And the plan was set. So I got there and it was actually really, really nice for a short period. I actually forgot what had been going on. So I asked Amy if she could grab a couple more drinks for us. And as soon as she got out, I grabbed my bag. That was when I dumped the jar full of leeches straight into the hot tub. When Amy came back with the drinks, I was like, I'm a little bit hot, so I'm going to stay out for a second, but you jump straight in. She didn't feel the leeches at first, but as soon as she did, she freaked out out and it was genuinely quite hilarious then got out the hot tub so quick that she slipped and while she was on the floor i leant over the top of her and said that was for sleeping with steve oh and speaking of steve don't worry i didn't let him off scot-free so i made a few calls and i disabled the brakes on his car my mom raised my brothers violently differently than how she raised my sister and i and i used to swear up and down that i wish i was a boy so much so that I started to impersonate boys and I just really thought that I was a man. This was somewhere from like being 12 or something like that because I just, I didn't understand why my relationship with my mom was not the way that it was with the brothers that I had. My friends would always talk about how like every Friday they'd have kind of like a self-care day with their mom, either going to get their nails done, going to the hair salon, things like that. And I was just so bitter and jealous because I just wished my mom would do those things for me. And it wasn't that I didn't ask her because I would and she would just kind of say inshallah, which means if God wills. But those things just never happened, which is crazy because now like I'll go get my nails done or get a pedicure and she's like, why don't you want to take me? Ooh, okay. So my dad always wanted my brothers to have short hair. So they were getting haircuts like every month with like a one guard or two if they were lucky. And I used to think that that was like a bonding experience. I don't know like how my brothers felt about it, but... I was just always so jealous of the fact that they were getting this like designated time to do something together. Whereas the designated time that I was getting with my mom was helping her cook or helping her clean. I also just wasn't really included with my siblings growing up. I had a lot of beef with my older brother. And so like he was very technology driven and I was more like art and I liked to, to paint, to do crafty stuff. So whenever the chances that they were playing or something, I just wasn't included, wasn't involved. So I spent a lot of time with myself just being bitter and angry. And all of that is just like coming out right now. like. I'm just so full of rage. I also figured out how to use this and I'm so proud of myself because my makeup stays on all day now. I was such a lonely kid. I was such a people pleaser because all I wanted was for someone to love me. I know, sad. I got caught in a lot of like really terrible friend groups. I had one that was so racist and it's crazy because this girl in her bio literally says Black Lives Matter. Did it? Did it really, Natalie? Not my circus, not my monkey. I also remember just not being allowed to go out with my friends and stuff. I was like 16 when I went to the mall by myself with my friend. Even then, I just had such random curfews at like seven or, or like four o'clock. Another thing, I just created a lot of really personal relationships with my teacher. I don't know if that was a good idea or not, but majority of my teachers already knew my brother. I remember that was very popular, very n notorious because he's very incredibly smart. He got a full ride scholarship to his university. He is so smart, praise to him. But I was just super depressed and stuff and I used to always cry. So all of my male teachers particularly, well actually both because I have both mommy and daddy issues. So they all like, I was, I just clung to them for dear life. He used to send me pictures of other girls on Instagram and tell me that I would look so much better if I did my hair or my nails or whatever, like the girls in the picture. Yeah. Namely, Jordan Rian. You know, from Love Island, he would send me her all the time. To the point where I literally blocked the poor girl because every time I saw her on my explore page, it would make my asshole itch. He used to compare me to other girls all the time, actually. One time I was cleaning out my makeup drawer whilst we were on FaceTime. I was showing him all the makeup that I'd like accumulated in storage. And <laughs> do you know what this man said to me? He looks at all my makeup and he goes, you know, my ex-girlfriend was naturally pretty. She didn't need all of that. Bro, true story. One time I was on the train on the way to go see him and I had a full on panic attack. And now I'm thinking about it, that was probably my subconscious telling me 
to not go and meet this guy. But anyway, I'm on the train and I mean like sat on the floor, complete stranger sat cradling me, holding my hand, wiping the tears off my face. Not even funny, but you just have to laugh. And no joke, I get off the train, go to meet him. Obviously I tell him what just happened. This guy did not care. He was like, oh, okay. I actually think he laughed at one point and made a comment like, oh, you're probably just emotional because you're coming on your period. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and not only that, he had tried to call me a couple times whilst I was on the train. Obviously, I was kind of busy <laughs> at the time. So, you know, I didn't answer. And he got mad at me because I didn't answer his calls whilst I was having a panic attack. <laughs> he used to make really inappropriate, kind of degrading comments about me to his friends whilst I was sitting there. Or sometimes we'd be out, again, table full of people, and he would just blurt out private personal information about me that I had literally asked him not to share with anyone. But did he care? No. Just announce it. And I would literally tell him, you know, it's really embarrassing when you do that in front of people. Like, can you not? The next time we were out, he'd do the exact same thing. Don't ask me why I put up with it because I just, I don't have an answer. Anytime I would call him out on something or tell him that something that he did had hurt my feelings, he would get mad at me for being mad at him for what he had done wrong to me. It don't even make no sense. Or he would just like straight up flip the whole thing around on me. His favorite line was, I have had all the same friends for 20 years and nobody else has a problem with me except you. Nobody else thinks all these things about me. So obviously it can't be me that's the problem. Yeah. Like now I'm saying all this out loud, I realize how nuts I was for letting somebody ever treat me that way. It wasn't until now that I started seeing somebody that has decorum, home training, respect for women, manners, sense, basic human decency, a conscience, and morals. What was I saying? <laughs> yeah, wait. It wasn't until I started dating a good guy that I realized how whack all that behavior really is. Let's talk about my experience growing up in the UK as a Filipino. I moved to a small town here in the UK when I was 8 years old and I was the only Asian in my primary school at the time. And you best believe my dad cooked me up that chicken and rice for the first day of school and everyone was confused because everyone else had sandwiches and crisps. And of course people were staring, this aura of chicken and rice was just marinating the whole room. This one was actually quite bad. Every time I played out, people would ask me if I lived in the local chippy. <laughs> because I was also the only Asian in the whole street. I was so confused because I never knew what a chippy was at the time. Also, no one even knew what Philippines was. <laughs> and I was constantly, to be honest, even till this day, getting mistaken for Chinese. Like, there's no other types of Asians out there. And it still makes me laugh till this day because we still have the same ignorance. And I was friends with this blonde girl who literally attracted boys like flies and I was just there. And there was one time she came mine and then a bunch of lads came knocking on for her. My dad was in pure shock because I wasn't allowed a boyfriend then. If you know Filipino or Asian dance in, gen in general, that's bad news. So yeah, my dad just shooed them away and she never came round since. I literally used to think I'd get pregnant from saying hi to boys because of the way my dad reacted before. This girl used to wear thongs to school in year seven. I haven't even grown one pube yet. Anyway, she probably thought there was no benefit in being friends with me, so she completely sucked me off. But it's fine because then I met my besties in high school. So growing up here in high school actually wasn't that bad. I actually had so much fun in high school. And I loved my group of friends in high school because they were literally weird with me and it just made high school so much more fun. And what I mean by weird is just having a laugh, being goofy, being silly without having to think like, oh my God, like I can't act this way because that boy's looking, you know, like I'll, I just love them. I miss them, Ah, Being the only Asian girl in school back then, thankfully I never really got bullied for my race because I had really good friends who backed me up. I'd get the odd racial slur and actually had a fight with a mosher. I also wasn't afraid to stick up for myself because this mosher literally murmured under her breath saying F word, C word. So obviously I had to... Also, there was no other ethnicity in my school. I was the only one that's Asian. I obviously noticed that I was the odd one out. I actually wanted to be Caucasian at one point. I noticed like my nose wasn't the same, my eyes wasn't the same. Uni really changed me though. I feel like that's when I started to really accept my Asian-ness because I started to hang out with more Asian people and I no longer wanted to be Caucasian. <laughs> However, I still get the street slurs. Has it calmed down now? I guess a little bit. I actually know there's another story for that. I'll tell you that in a different video. 
Am I the asshole for asking my sister what the fuck she expected to happen at her shit show of a bachelorette party? For some reason, my female 32 sister, 23, and her fiance, 25, decided that the very best way to celebrate before getting married was to have a joint bachelor slash bachelorette party at strip clubs. They also hired a bus limo for the evening. The aftermath was, thus far, three breakups, four people dropping out of the wedding party, one impending divorce, and one arrest. The cleaning bill for the limo was more than the original rental fee. She was crying to our mom at dinner the other day and I snorted. I tried not to. I honestly did. I was trying my best to just keep my mouth shut. She asked me what was so funny. I said that I wasn't sure what she expected to happen. Getting a group of people drunk, using illicit substances, and getting watching exotic dancers. She said that I was an asshole for judging her and her friends. I said I wasn't judging, just that literally anyone could have seen that outcome. My mom told me to apologize because my sister is having to replace most of her wedding party on the fly. I did, but I still think I'm right. Am I the asshole? <sighs> so I, all of high school and all of college, my plan was to go to law school to become a lawyer. I wasn't sure what type of law I wanted to practice, but I always knew like law school was the end game. Like that's what I was going to be doing with my life. So I go to college with that in mind. And then my senior year, I study my booty off. I take the LSAT, I get a good score and I start applying to law schools. I applied pretty much like all over the country to just see where I could get in. She didn't get in anywhere. That's why she's doing what she's doing now. <laughs> got a facial and she did extractions and she extracted this spot so hard it literally bruised contrary to addison trying to troll me i actually got into every school i applied to and a few of the smaller schools actually offered me full tuition scholar scholarships to go to law school there but the law school i really wanted to go to, go to was the university of iowa at the time, Iowa was a top 20 law school, so I was so excited that I got in. However, I did not get any scholarship offers from them, which I started doing the math on how much I was going to have to take out in loans. And after law school at Iowa, I would have been over $100,000 in debt from going to law school. And that terrified me for rightful reasons. And in college, I double majored in corporate communications and broadcast news and did my minor in political science since you don't have to major in anything specific for law school. You could literally major in anything. And during college, I had a marketing internship one summer and then I had a news station internship another summer. So I had experience in both of those fields and I really liked marketing too. So the more I thought about it, I was like, mm, let's see here. I was super close to putting my seat deposit down at Iowa to go to law school there. And then at the last minute, I was like, you know what? I'm going to work in marketing for a few years to make sure, like at least one year, to make sure I don't wanna pursue that field first before I get into all this debt. Like, I feel like it's a good idea to explore all my options first. So right before graduating from college, I accepted a marketing coordinator position in Denver. And it was also around that time that I started posting my workouts on Instagram just to share them and give other women like ideas and workouts that they could do too, because I really liked working out. And at this point, I wasn't like dead set on going to law school or not. I was just enjoying my marketing job and posting on Instagram for fun. A year after starting my fitness Instagram account, I had grown 40,000 followers. And that's when I started working with brands and stuff like that. And once I started making the same amount through social media that I was making at my full-time job, I quit my full-time marketing job to pursue my social media slash the business I started full-time. And we are fully enjoying the freedom that owning two businesses and doing content creation is giving us. And who knows, maybe I'll go to law school someday. Get ready with me while I tell you why I quit my job at Wilco three years ago. First, I want to start by saying Wilco is going into administration at the moment. I'm pretty sure they're all closing down as well, so a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. So I'm just sending my love to everyone that still works for the company, but this is just my experience and why I quit. So three years ago, just before lockdown, I started TikTok. I just started it for fun, but I did still make the retail videos that I make today. And obviously, I was wearing my Wilco uniform, but because I was 
still working there. They have like a social media policy and I didn't realize, but I wasn't actually allowed to post on social media like with the uniform because I'm kind of like representing the company. I remember my manager actually knew about my TikTok and found my videos funny. But really randomly one day I got called into the office and my manager said that someone on social media had called up head office to complain about my TikToks. So it was clearly a Karen with nothing better to do. The person didn't know which Wilco I worked at. So that's why they emailed head office, sent them my videos and just said, this girl works at a Wilco. And for some reason they found my videos offensive, which by the way, you would only take offense to my TikToks if you are the Karen in the situation. I think I had around 200,000 followers on TikTok at the time. And this was when I started to get more brand deals and stuff. And I was already finding it kind of difficult to balance work and TikTok. So I was already kind of thinking about quitting my job to do social media full time, which has always been a dream of mine. So what my manager said to me was, you can either quit Wilco and continue to make the TikToks, or if I wanted to stay working at Wilco, I would have to stop making the TikToks. But at the time I had built a following just from making these retail POV sketch videos. So I didn't want to just throw that away and stop making those to keep working there. But people kind of knew me on TikTok for like the red t-shirt, the Wilco uniform. I don't think I even used a Wilco background at the time. I was using like a Tesco background, but wearing the Wilco uniform, which by the way, you couldn't even see a Wilco logo in it. It's on the back. So I don't know. At the time I was already thinking about quitting. So I just said to my manager, like, I want to still make the TikToks. So I basically handed in my resignation notice on the spot. And I'm honestly so grateful to be in this position where I could afford to quit my real job and make my hobby my actual job. So yeah, I'm very, very grateful, but I just want to say I'm so sorry to hear about Wilco going into administration and shutting down. Everyone that's going to be made redundant and affected by this, my heart goes out to you. But yeah, that is the story time about how I quit Wilco. My piece of crap husband, go use your left hand for your blue balls. You've posted several times in this sub complaining that I don't F you enough. You post that I shrink away from your touch and you just do NTK and out what to do and why more? Instead of complaining to internet strangers and making me seem like a frigid B-word who might have some childhood trauma regarding intimacy, which isn't even true. What is wrong with you? Maybe you should try looking inward. Do you think it's maybe because you refuse to help me clean? Do you think it's maybe because of the fact that whenever I ask for your help you tell me well you do it better than me or maybe later? Or the fact that at least once a month you yell at me for not making the food correctly? Do you think it's due to the fact that you never once woke up at night for the babies and would yell at me when one of them woke you up crying? Or because of the fact that across three kids you've changed maybe five diapers total? Do you think it's because you refuse to spend any time at all with me and the kids? I can't even remember the last time you took me on a date night. I stopped asking two years ago when you didn't even get me a card for my birthday. You actually woke me up on my birthday to yell at me that our son had thrown up all over his bed and I didn't clean it? If you were awake and I wasn't maybe just do it yourself? Do you think it's because the only time you try to F me is after I'm already asleep? Do you think it's because of the fact that over the last three years you haven't even tried to make me come? Or that you threw away my vibrator because I shouldn't have anything except my husband inside of me? Or maybe because you keep asking me for certain intimate acts you know make me extremely uncomfortable? Do you think maybe it's the fact that after the last three times we had intimacy you've made rude comments about my extra flab and stretch marks? Or maybe was it the time that I bought lingerie and you laughed and said I should have gotten a larger size? Or maybe last year for Christmas when I said it would be fun to go to a cabin in the snow just as for my birthday you instead got me personal training sessions and told me this will help with my attraction? Do you think it's because of the fact you constantly talk about how hot your new coworker is? Or the fact that you go to a strip club almost every Friday after work instead of spending time with your wives and kids? Please explain to me why I would want to have intimacy with you. Why? When the only times we do have intimacy it lasts three minutes and afterwards you just roll over and tell me to get myself off. How can I when you throw away my vibrators? Maybe instead of coming to Reddit and making me seem like the bad guy, fix yourself first. EFF you. Words don't describe the contempt I feel for you after finding your multiple posts across different subs about how I hate intimacy and am possibly asexual. I love intimacy. I used to have good intimacy. I miss it. I don't miss you anymore. I hope you read this.